Hi everyone, this is Colin Steele. I'm a second year PhD student here at Regent University. This presentation summarizes the academic research article entitled News as Culture, a comparative study of newspaper coverage of the war in Iraq, conducted by Selma Ganim, published in Golan Johnson and Wanta's book entitled The International Media Communication in a Global Age. First, I'll discuss the major theoretical assumptions that guide Ganim's study. Second, I'll discuss the proposed hypotheses and research questions. And thirdly, I'll discuss the results that coincide with the hypotheses. So let's go ahead and get started. Ganim's research stems from major criticism of the war in Iraq's representation in American news reporting. So critics pointed out that American American media's tendency to rely on government reports leads to a biased uh, presentation of the war. War reporting is distorted by boosterism. Reporters lacked understanding of the regional context in which they were reporting, and international news is framed through a patriotic framework that reflects propaganda. So really, the major purpose of Ganim's research is to investigate these claims presented by media critics. By conducting a content analysis between U.S. newspaper coverage of the war with other international newspapers. And according to Ganim, by comparing home team coverage, this study illustrates the various cultural ideological prisms through which news is reported. So let's go ahead and take a look at the research methods in Ganim's research. This study examined newspaper coverage from four national newspapers, the New York Times in America, The Guardian in Britain, Le Monde in France, and Al Ham in Egypt. For a 17-day period, before and after the second invasion of, the, of Iraq in 2003. Let's go ahead and take a look at the seven hypotheses presented by Gannon. Hypothesis 1A states, there will be a positive, there will be more positive coverage of the war in the U.S. newspapers followed by the British, French, and Egyptian paper. Inversely related to that, hypothesis 1b states a negative coverage of the war will be higher in the Egyptian and French papers followed by the British newspaper and the American paper. Hypothesis 2 states each newspaper will quote more sources from its country of origin than other papers. Hypothesis 3 states that the negative coverage of Hassan in the American and British newspapers will exceed that of the Egyptian newspapers. Hypothesis 4a states that the American and French newspaper will focus more on Iraq casualties while the American newspaper and British newspapers will focus more on coalition forces casualties. The American and the British media will give more coverage to the bravery of the coalition military force than the French and Egyptian newspapers, as stated in Hypothesis 4b. Hypothesis 5 states that the American and the British media will focus less on anti-war demonstrations less on other countries' oppositions to the war, and more on other countries' support for the war than the Egyptian and French media. Hypothesis 6 states that the American and British media will focus less on the United Nations than the Egyptian and French media. And Hypothesis 7 states the Egyptian media will focus more on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict than the British, French, and the American media. Ganim presents two research questions, which ask, what is the context used to cover the war in each newspaper? And the second asking, what are the main reasons for the war as indicated in the four newspapers? This presentation will only look at the hypotheses. So if we look at table 10.1, 10, 10 the percentages of articles per paper that were supportive, neutral, or against the war, we see that hypothesis 1A is supported due to the rank of positive news coverage. And here we see the New York Times at 7%, the Guardian at 3.3, the French newspaper at 2.6, and the Egyptian paper is at 0.8%.
hypothesis eight Hypothesis 1b is partially supported due to similarity percentages of non-American newspapers against the war. Moving on to table 10.2, what we see is that hypothesis 2 is partially supported. So most newspapers use articles from their own country and region, with exception of France, which relied on uh, American sources more so at 30% right down here. And moving along to table 10.3, we see the portrayal of Hassan mention of Iraqi coalition casualties, Iraqi and the American heroics. We see that hypothesis three is supported in which the American and British newspapers demonized Hassan more than the Egyptian newspaper. Again, the Egyptian newspaper was at 0.8%. Hypothesis 4A states uh, or f hypothesis 4A was partially supported because the Guardian reported more on Iraqi casualties rather than the Egyptian newspaper. And we see that at 17%, whereas the Egyptian newspaper was at 126 Hypothesis 4B was supported because non-Egyptian papers reported more on coalition heroics than the Egyptian newspaper. And that is clearly indicated with this 0%. Moving right along to table 10.4, what we see is the coverage of anti-war demonstration governments that are pro-war, anti-war, the UN, and Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And we see here that hypothesis 5 is partially supported. The US and British papers focus less on anti-war demonstrations. Yet France reported more on pro-war countries than the comparison groups. And what we see here is this 10%, the French newspaper, compared to the uh, comparison groups. Hypothesis six is partially supported, primarily because the US and the British newspapers focus less on UN than France, but not Egypt. And Egypt was here at this 13.8%. And lastly, hypothesis seven was supported primarily because Egyptian, the Egyptian newspaper focused more on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict than the comparison groups. So the conclusions that we can take away from Ghanem's research is that the war in Iraq was portrayed differently depending on a country's media outlets. While majority of the newspapers were neutral and objective, differences between newspapers that supported the war and newspapers that opposed the war emerged. And so what we see here is that countries involved in the war, such as America and Britain, had higher levels of support than countries that opposed the war. Countries that opposed the war, such as Egypt and France, had higher levels of objection. So while the newspapers were largely objective, they frame events by placing emphasis on events through various lenses and by excluding other perspectives. So the key takeaway from this research is that news has the potential to shape our perceptions of global events.